Okay, so good day everyone. So after we have the introduction no, to the field or the branch of structural engineering, so let's proceed to the to our course now for the semester, which is earthquake engineering. But before we go on to the specifics of our subject no, for the semester, let's first have the introduction to the earthquake resistant design. Okay? So first let us define the earthquake engineering. No? So it can be defined as the branch of engineering devoted to mitigating earthquake hazards. No? Sabi, nga, sabi ko nga last time when we were discussing the structural engineering. No? I have also mentioned that one of the sub-branches of structural engineering is of course earthquake engineering. So Because it, uh, it also covers the investigation and solutions to the problems created by damaging earthquakes. No? So it also uh, works in involved in the practical application of the solutions. No? Like for example, planning, designing, and construction, and managing earthquake resistance structures and facilities. So that's why this sub-branch, no? so this sub-branch of um, structural engineering and civil engineering itself is very, um, very important no? to the society. So the, we, the practice of earthquake engineering is um, beneficial and very significant. It could also be considered as um, not just a sub-branch but uh, a different uh, field of its own. No, uh, Earthquake engineering is very, it's also a broad study because it not just focuses focuses on the earthquake hazards but is but it is a but it covers the uh, solution to the problems caused by damages from the earthquakes okay so earthquake, earthquake engineering um, captures or it's the scope of earthquake engineering captures first the seismicity nature and measures of recording uh, recording of earthquakes so hakop dito yung um, paggamit natin ng mga equipments or like um, uh, measuring skills no, to define or to uh, record the events of earthquakes around the world. No? And the second, the second scope of earthquake engineering is also the planning for seismic risk assessment and mitigation. No? The third scope for earthquake engineering is analysis, design and construction of earthquake resistant Structures. So, dito papasok yung trabaho na mismo ng uh, civil engineers. No? So, mas, mas, mas pumapasok dito yung role of civil, engineer, civil engineers, particularly uh, structural engineers. No? And also, you have the evaluation of buildings for earthquake resistance. Like, um, like what we had last month, no? last August, there was a... A conference, you no know, discussing um, engineering heritage and existing structures, you no. Know. So, meron din dong mga topics um, regarding the evaluation of damaged buildings, like the buildings in Bohol, you no. Know. So they they discuss their uh, evaluation and as well as their um, renovation or retrofitting for those projects. So. And kung makikita nyo sa mga, uh, sa mga news, no, uh, sa YouTube makikita rin, nyo rin yun ngayon. Um, whenever there was an earthquake and um, there are infrastructure that are greatly affected, no, ang unang-unang in-interview are structural engineers. So they're, they're the ones to uh, explain further kung anong phenomenon or bakit ganun yung occurrence or ganun klaseng damage yung nangyari sa mga infrastructure because of the earthquake. No, no. And aside from this four scopes, you also have the retrofitting of earthquake damage structures. So after the evaluation of the uh, the structures or infrastructures that were greatly affected by the earthquake, no, there if 
if necessary, the engineers will recommend to conduct or to provide designs and planning and as well as the um, uh, reconstruction or the retrofitting of these earthquake damage structures. And finally, it also covers the earthquake management and security. Okay? So, let's first define the earthquake now because our discussion for the whole semester is iikot lang to earthquake, no? But, the, uh, but let's define first the earthquake. So, the earthquake is the motion or the vibration of the earth surface, no? So, it, it could also cause a major destruction, no? It could sometimes be violent, no? And it follows a release of energy in the Earth's crust. So this energy can be generated by sudden movements of segments, that's what we call the plates, no, of the Earth's crust, or by a volcanic eruption, or even man-made explosions. So basically, um, yung movement ng surface of the Earth, or particularly the movement of the crust, is what we call the earthquake. Okay? Now, the sources of the ground movements, no? So, hindi lang basta-basta isang, isa lang anong kukos. But there are a lot of uh, causes or there are a lot of sources for the move, for the ground to move or for the movement of the ground. Move. So, the first thing or the first source of, of these movements are the movement of the tectonic plates, no? So, pag gumalaw yung mga plates, particularly the the tectonic plates no, of the earth so it causes um rupture and uh, movement that would cause major earthquakes so this is the um most common source of the ground movements no? um second one would be the volcanoes so um when a volcano erupted uh, it could cause the major movement of the ground no? so mapapansin niyo pag may mga vulkan na pumutok ang kasunod niyan is lindol no because uh, nagkakaroon ng disruption because na, dahil sa pag uh, putok ng vulkan no lumabas yung magma niya so nagkaroon ng major movement do sa ilalim ng vulkan that could cause na rin the for the ground to move so it would um the volcano volcanic eruption could followed by in an earthquake so other sources of ground movements you also have the explosions no um like like in the 1950s no when the uh, development of nuclear energy and nuclear explosions are on the rise no especially during the war or after the war um world war so like for example the nuclear explosion by north korea so after that uh, it caused major earthquake no and aside from these explosions particularly man-made explosions you also have collapse of mines and large reservoirs so because of this large-scale man-made projects no and uh, this disrup disruption as well so nakakaroon ng major movement to the ground no and of course we're already familiar with this the tsunamis no especially on the coastal areas pag nag occur yung um, earthquake para karon ng movement sa sa coastal areas sigurado ang kasunod nun are tsunamis no so this movement of uh, of the earth's crust particularly um or uh, majorly earthquakes no so this causes major hazards uh, first one will be the failure of slopes. So, kung nagkaroon ng ground movement, this may cause um, pagbagsak ng mga slope, lalo na sa mga, um, sa mga mountain, mountain areas. No? Sa mga, katulad ito na picture na to. So, yung road is parang bangin. No? So, because of the earthquake or the movement of the grounds or the ground movement, nagkaroon ng failure do sa slope. Kaya, nagkaroon ng uh, slide, landslide, no, or pagbagsak ng lupa dun sa may bangin. Then, next one, another hazard caused by the earthquake is the occurrence of fire. Lalo na kung ang earthquake mo 
occurred in a major place, no, urban area or with um, a lot of buildings or let's say nagkaroon earthquakes sa mga industrial areas nga doon. So, it may cause a major fire uh, occurrence. So, the next hazard caused by earthquake are, of course, the collapse of the building, especially if buildings are not um, designed to resist major uh, earthquakes, no? So, like for the example, this is a building in Taiwan, no? So, I think it occurred in 2012. It happened in one of the major cities in Taiwan. So, nagkaroon ng um, disruption that causes the uh, foundation of the uh, of this building to collapse. Kaya, mapapansin nyo, tumambing yung uh, yung building, no? And another uh, hazard, no, caused by the earthquake is uh, in terms of infrastructure, also bridges, no? So, again, kung hindi rin design ng maayos yung bridge mo to resist the loads caused by the earthquake, so it may cause a collapse, no? So, all this bridge is also in, uh, in Taiwan, no? Um, of course, Taiwan is located in Pacific Ring, Ring of Fire, kaya ano din siya to earthquakes like the Philippines. So, this bridge collapse, um, hindi siya same year with the collapse of this building sa taas, no? Uh, but, during the, this particular earthquake, there are also a lot of bridges around Taiwan that uh, collapse as well. Okay? So, another hazard caused by earthquake are, of course, landslides. So, the, if, the, if there was a disruption in or disturbance in the ground, no? So, they may, it may happen to have landslide. So, this landslide is in uh, Mindanao during a 2012 earthquake no, sa southern Mindanao. See, this is in South Cotabata, if I'm not mistaken. So, one of the major effects of this earthquake is, of course, a landslide. No? Makikita nyo, sobrang malaking part ng bundok na to yung uh, nagkaroon ng landslide. Kung baka nakalbo talaga. Kalbo talaga yung, yung isang part or isang fraction of this uh, mountain. No? And lastly, uh, one of the hazards caused by the earthquake is of course disturbance. Especially in, in towns and urban areas or suburban areas na um, occupied by a lot of people. No? So, this also is, this picture is also in Mindanao. It's also in 2012 earthquake. No? In southern Mindanao. Okay? So, what causes the earthquake? No? So, uh, based from our source of ground movements, this may cause earthquakes. No? So, first you have the tectonic earthquake. So, the movement of the plates in the earth's crust. So, this may cause earthquake, no? And of course, you have the volcanic earthquake. So, earthquake um, occurred after the major volcanic eruption. And aside from this uh, natural phenomenon, you also have a man-made man or an earthquake caused by man-made um, man causes like explosive earthquakes. So, um, major earth explosions, no, caused by the, um, caused by, uh, mankind may occur major earthquakes. And lastly, the collapse earthquake. Okay? Now, let's now further discuss the study of the earth, no, because we're talking about earthquakes, the movement of the earth, no? So, let's discuss the internal structure of the Earth. Okay? See the, so, the Earth shape is, in, is an oblate spheroid with a diameter along the equator of about 12,740 kilometers with a polar diameter of 
12,700 kilometer. The higher diameter along the equator is caused by the higher centrifugal forces generated along the equator due to the rotation of the Earth. Okay? So, extract natin yung Earth. Okay? Palawakin natin yung ano ng Earth. So, the first layer of the Earth is what we call the, the crust. No? So, this is also called to be the lithosphere or the outer part of the Earth. So, this this part of the Earth or this layer of the Earth is where the life exists. O, doon dito lahat ng buhay. So, the average thickness of crust beneath continents is about 40 kilometers, whereas it decreases to as much as 5 kilometers beneath the oceans. No? The oceanic crust is uh, constituted by basaltic rocks and continental part by granitic rocks no? overlying the basaltic, basaltic rocks. Now, compared to the layers below, so this layer has high rigidity and anisotropy. Okay? So that's the first layer of the earth. So the next layer will be the center, no, hindi, hindi pinaka-center, pero yung pinapagit na ano mga layers. So what that's what we call the mantle, no? So the mantle also have so two sub-layers, no? The mantle at, as a whole has a 2,900 kilometer thick layer. Okay? Again, the mantle consists of two sub-layers. You have the upper mantle, which reaches a depth of about 400 kilometers, made of olivine and pyroxene. Now, the second sub-layer of mantle is made of more homogeneous mass of magnesium and iron oxide and quartz. Okay? So, sa mantle, or particularly in the lower mantle, there are no earthquakes that are recorded. Okay? The specific gravity of mantle is 5. No? The value of the specific gravity of mantle is 5. The mantle has an average temperature of about 2,200 degrees Celsius. And the material is a viscous semi-molten state. Okay? The mantle act like a fluid in response to slowly acting stresses and creeps under the slow, slow loads. Pero nagbibehave siya as a solid in the presence of rapidly, incre rapidly acting stresses. No? This causes by the earthquake waves. So if there are a lot of earthquake waves, it produces the rapidly acting it acts um, stresses, major stresses that could behave the mantle as a solid. No? Okay? But without that or opposite of that, it causes or it acts like a fluid. Okay? And lastly, you have the core, the core of the earth. No? So it like the mantle, it also have the two sub-layers, the outer core and the inner core. So the core has a radius of 3,470 kilometers and consists of an inner core of radius of 1,370 kilometers and an outer core no, of greater than 1370 kilometers but less than 3470 kilometers no the core is composed of molten iron probably mixed with small quantities of other elements such as nickel and sulfur or silicon the inner solid core is very dense nickel iron material and is subjected to very high pressures the uh, maximum temperature in the core is estimated to be about 3,000 degrees Celsius. Now, the specific gravity of outer core is about 9 to 12, whereas that of inner core is 15. No? So, compared to the specific gravity of mantle, which is 5, and the crust, almost similar to the specific gravity of mantle, mapapansin nyo na very dense so, sobrang dense 
nung um nung behavior no core um, both of the inner core and the uh, outer core so almost um pa times 2 no or almost times 3 yung pagiging dense niya and of course mas subjected siya sa mas mataas na pressures compared to the other layers of the earth no? so that's the uh, internal structures of the earth so because we're talking about earthquakes no so let's have a um, mini history lesson no uh, let's talk about the history of major in international earthquake events okay so these are just uh, not the this is these are not the major as in major major in international earthquake events but these are um, some of the major international earthquakes earthquake events there are also a lot no marami pang ibang nakatatak sa saysayan ng mundo but I'll, we'll just discuss four of the of this major international earthquake events okay so one of the recorded uh, deadly or or destructive uh, earthquake his uh, earthquake event is the 1556 Sian earthquake Okay, so this, this is the most destructive in all history. But, and it left 800,000 persons dead. So this is in China. Okay, so it occurred in 1556 in Xi'an, China. Okay, so let's go further to the more recent. So after long centuries, let's go to the 1976 Tangshan earthquake. This is also in China. So the more recently, the Tangshan earthquake of 1976 repeated the tragedy. And although in on in an area without news houses, it left an estimated 700,000 dead. Okay. So af now after nine years, a major earthquake event also occurred: the 1985 Mexico earthquake. Okay. So the Mexico City in 1985 suffered. 10,000 deaths from building failures during the shaking from an earthquake 400 kilometers away along the Pacific coast. And a year after, also in this uh, part of the world, is the 1986 San Salvador earthquake. In 1986, in Salva San Salvador, the shaking was 5 seconds or less, leaving 2,500 dead. Okay? So, Imagine yung 5 seconds lang yung pag-ground, ay yung pag-shake nung ground, no? But it already caused 2,500 people to be dead. Okay? So, let's go further or let's go in the Philippines naman. So, I'll, let's go on the history of deadliest earthquake, particularly here in the Philippines. Okay? So, first is the more recent the Bohol earthquake in 2013, no? So, it, it is a 7.2 magnitude tremor that killed more than 150 people, destroyed century-old churches, and affected more than 3 million families in central Visayas, no? So, this earthquake, imagine nyo, same year din siya with Yolanda, di ba? So, very destructive yung, um, yung taong 2013 kasi... This earthquake happened in the uh, later part of the year, 2013. So, same, si Yolanda is in November. I think the Bohol is in October, 2013, something like that. No? So, so, so in this particular earthquake, no, ang, ang dami niyang the damage na buildings, particularly in Bohol, no? So, isa sa mga major dis destruction na, naga, na nangyari is the, uh, pagguho mga mga different churches no so this church is in lobok lobok church sa punta niya namin to be uh, in 2013 or 2012 before siya nagkaroon ng earthquake so ang ganda pa ng facade nito eh nung napunta namin to. this is the lobok church in lobok bohol no so other churches that were greatly affected were the loon church the maribohok church and also the facade and bell tower of the Baklayon Church. So, other than the century-old churches, there are also 
um, buildings that were affected. So there are municipal halls that um, that were destroyed though, or not, if not greatly destroyed, medyo naguho ng bahagya. Also, the provincial district hospital in Loon, no, uh, were also affected. So, other than these buildings, they also have other infrastructures like bridges na collapse, no, especially yung mga lumang bridges na. So, nakaroon ng destruction sa transportation because of the collapse of the bridges, no, sa Bohol. And during this time, pagkatapos ng earthquake, um, the some of the structural engineers, particularly the members and boards of the Association of Structural Engineers of the Philippines, um, conducted kaagad-agad a eh, evaluation do sa nangyari. So, based on the evaluations, so, so sobrang um, sobrang dami na apektuhan. And because of this evaluation, they uh, conducted um, planning to restore these buildings as well. Okay? The next one will be the Mindoro earthquake in 1994. So, the, a total of 1,530 houses in the coastal areas of Baco and Calapan in Oriental Mindoro were swept away by a tsunami generated by a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. So, uh, other than the earthquake, nagkaroon din ng tsunami. Uh, particularly in the Mindoro, Verde Island, and Baco Islands. No? And it also killed 78 people. No? In terms of infrastructures, um, there are 24 bridges that, uh, that collapsed during uh, the earthquake. No? Uh, so this major earthquake happened in 1994 in Mindoro. So um, let's go to the more ano more luma. Okay, so let's go to the Kasig Kasiguran earthquake in 1968. Okay, so the 7.3 magnitude earthquake killed a total of 270 people and also caused massive landslide and tsunami in Kasiguran Aurora. So yung area na to alam ko Quezon Quezon na part na siya ng Quezon province ngayon, no. So this also killed 300 people nung nagiba o nag-collapse yung Ruby Tower sa Binondo. So uh, this earthquake, no, um, not just greatly affected the areas of Aurora and Quezon but it also affected the Metro Manila, particularly in Binondo. So kung kung saan nakatayo yung Ruby Tower where 300 people um, killed during the collapse of Ruby Tower. Uh, so, other than the collapse of the Ruby Tower, which is the most famous one during... Kasi it, ito yung pinakamalaking building na gumuha eh, during the Kasiguran, Kasiguran earthquake. So, other than the Ruby Tower, you also have the Philippine Bar Association building no, uh, the Aloha Theater and Tuason Building, both in Metro Manila. Okay. So, isa sa ma ito naman, isa sa mga pinakasikat na earthquake, no? isa sa mga pinaka-destructive um, earthquake na nangyari sa history ng Philippines, the Luzon Earthquake in 1990. Okay. So, on July 16, 1990, one of the strongest earthquakes to ever strike the country, occurred in several areas of Central Luzon and Cordillera region. So, yes, sa mga, uh, wa, some of the major cities that were greatly affected were the La Union, Tagupan, uh, Cabanatuan, and most of all, the Baguio City. So, during this earthquake, ilang araw na, 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 na parang sobrang isolated nung Baguio, no? Because, a Baguio is, is situated in a very high elevation no, sa bundok kasi ang Baguio and this can be uh, breached by uh, major roads lang, no, like the Cannon Road. So, uh, because the Cannon Road kasi is gilid ng bundok, right? If you've been to Baguio, no, mapapansin nyo. If you go to Baguio via the Cannon Road, Cannon Road is masyado kasing matarik. 
and masyadong manipis yung kalsada sa Canon Road. No? So, during the earthquake, uh, nagkaroon ng major landslide. So, hindi madaanan, isa sa mga di madaanan talaga is the Canon Road. So, during the earthquake in Luzon in 1990, so, so sobrang hindi ma-reach, hindi makarating yung tulong sa Baguio. So, ilang araw daw silang uh, isolated from the rest of the Philippines. No? Kasi they're situated in the in the mountains, no? And the roads collapse going to Baguio, specifically the Canon Road, no? So, this 7.8 magnitude tremor resulted in a total of 1,621 deaths and serious damage in properties. So, this picture is the Hyatt Terraces Baguio Hotel, no? So, it one of the uh, buildings na major buildings na collapse is the uh, Hyatt Terrace Baguio Hotel. Okay? So, um, during, alam ko, during this time, parang may conference pa ata na nangyayari dyan sa um, sa Hyatt, uh, Hyatt Hotel, no? So, that's why it, it caused to have a large number of deaths, particularly in the in that area of Baguio. Now, that's why after the Luzon earthquake, no, um, nagkaroon, no, mas naging stringent yung pagpapatayo ng mga buildings and infrastructure sa Baguio, no, because of the lesson uh, na binigay ng Luzon earthquake in 1990. No, and so, um, aside from Baguio, that were greatly affected. You also have the Cabanatuan. In Cabanatuan, there's this building, the Christian College of the Philippines in Cabanatuan, uh, city in Nueva Ecija. So, uh, isa rin to sa mga gumuho during those times, no? May, parang may napabalita pa ba nga na um, there was this kid na naging, parang naging, na namatay, na naging hero because of saving a lot of people na paulit-ulit yung binabalikan para lang ma- Save. So, those are some stories during the uh, this earthquake. And lastly, you also have the Moro Gulf earthquake in Sulu, in Mindanao, in 1976. So, with a 7.9 magnitude and almost 3,000 casualties, this Mindanao earthquake is officially the strongest and deadliest earthquake in Philippine history. Now, almost 40,000 people in regions 9 and 12 were also left homeless by this tragedy. So, itong picture na to, so this is the uh, New Society Hotel um, in Mindanao na gumuho. Ito yung mapapansin nyo, uh, nawala yung poste niya, kaya bumagsak yung upper part ng building to the ground. No? And the and this larger picture, parang ganun din yung nangyari, this is the Sultan Hotel. Also in Mindanao. So parang ganun din yung nangyari sa building. Same sa, sa nangyari sa New Society Hotel. Nawala din yung fundasyon o yung poste sa ilalim. That's why yung upper part ng building uh, collapsed to the ground. No, So it uh, this earthquake called, is known to be the official or known to be the official strongest and deadliest earthquake in Philippine history. So these are just some of the earthquake, um, major earthquake happened in the Philippines. But these are the, these are, this, is, this, sorry, these are considered to be the deadliest earthquake in the Philippines. Okay? Now, let's talk about the Pacific Ring of Fire. I know everyone is very familiar with the term Pacific Ring of Fire, no? So, basically, the major area in the ba basin of the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many earthquakes and volcanic rupture, ruptures occur. So, ito yung, itong area na to, itong parang horseshoe shape, makapresin nyo, uh, from, uh, from New Zealand going up, up, up to the Southeast Asia, to the Indonesia, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, going to the Philippines, Taiwan, Japan, and northern part, Russia, Alaska, and going down to the western areas of the United States, to Mexico, 
and also the western area of the South America. So this area is considered to be Pacific Ring of Fire. No? So dito mas maraming um, vulkan and as well as earthquakes na nangyayari. Okay? So makikita nyo sa screen, um, isa sa, sa mga or some of the major earthquakes happened around the Pacific Ring of Fire. No? Pasama dyan yung um, uh, earthquake and volcanic eruption bala. Uh, volcanic eruptions, earthquake and eruptions. So, makikita nyo na dyan yung uh, Mount Pinatubo. No? Uh, we're all, we are all aware of what happened in Mount Pinatubo in 1991. So, sobrang laki yung uh, explosions no? uh, in which um, na experience or um, affected in in some areas of the Philippines, not just in Luzon. No? Sabi nga, parang kwento rin sa amin nun. 1991 doon, di pa ako pinapangak niyan, ha? During the 1991, mga uh, eruption, so parang sabi rin sa, kwento sa akin, uh, dito sa Palawan, nakarating din yung ashes, no? parang sobrang lakas nung eruption ng mga pinutubo. Um, yung ashes niya, lumipad, kaabot, uh, din, nadala ng hangin dito sa Palawan. Parang yun yung kwento sa akin nung uh, parents ko no? during the 1991 um, Pinatuba eruption. Okay? So, the Pacific Ring of Fire has 452 volcanoes. So, more than 75% of world's active and dormant volcanoes are located in the Pacific Ring of Fire. Okay? So, we already had a brief introduction, no, to the earthquake resistant design, no. So, uh, after this, we will be discussing the elements of seismology, okay. So, we're to we'll be talking continental drifts, the pla plate tectonics, as well, of course, the movement of plate boundaries, and, yeah. So, other than that, we'll also be discussing the propagation of seismic disturbances. Okay? So, thank you and have a good day.